not responding? Can't hear me. Can you hear me? That's what God was saying to Samuel. Can you hear me? We're attached to these things a lot, aren't we? You ever get in the midst of them and, and you're in conversation and all of a sudden, whether your thumb hits a thing and you lose your, the other person on the other end of the line or they do it and you, you're in mid-conversation and, ha- and, and, and you're getting to the, the real punch of what they're asking you and then all of a sudden they, they've gone. And the next thing you know, you're pl- playing phone tag back and forth as each of you try to dial the other person uh, trying to get at. It reminded me of this. Network. Can you hear me now? Good. By never being satisfied. Can you hear me now? Good. Until no matter where you go. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Your call goes through. Can you hear me now? Good. Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. I'm excited about this new series, The Call of God. All across the Salvation Army world today, is what is called Call and Commitment Sunday. And so we're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 3, which is God's call to young Samuel. I don't know what your understanding is of the call of God, but you will recognize from this series that all of us are called to God. This morning the emphasis is going to be upon the call to God in full-time ministry. I don't know whether you've ever, uh, God has ever laid that on your hearts at one time or not, um, and you kind of shrugged it off or whatever, um, but it, it does have something for us to say. And I, th- and I think in a congregation like ours, when uh, perhaps we don't have a lot of young, individ- young, lo- young people, uh, or, or, or that we, we sometimes, when these special days come up, Sundays come up, we kind of just push it aside and we really don't. I, I got to confess, it's been a long while since I've been able to do a call and commitment Sunday. And I feel a little bit awkward about it because of the makeup of who we are in that aspect. But I shouldn't. God forgive me for that. It's important for us to realize and to recognize all of us are called in one way or another. In this series, The Call of God, I could have, you know, gone on for far more Sundays than I I can imagine because, you know, there's various calls. There's the call that we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at the call uh, to love, the call to holy living, and uh, how we walk according to those particular calls. But all of us are called. We're called to salvation. We're we're called to missions. Um, We're called to be uh, lay leaders within the fellowship of the church. Um, We're called to be vessels through which God uses uh, out there in the secular world, uh, in our workplaces. or in a particular uh, leadership role, Northern Spirit, Big Band, um, whatever. We're all called in one way or or another. And that commercial a few years back reminds us that we need to be where we get the best, what's the word, Greg? Greg? Uh, the best what? Reception. Yeah, reception. Why are you whispering? I got to turn this thing up. <laughs> yeah, the best reception. Don't be shy. <laughs> right. And sometimes as we go through Scripture, we, we approach it and we say, okay, God, speak to me through this this morning. But sometimes we don't really get the best reception for, some, for whatever reason. We're, we're not totally there, ready to hear what God would have to say to us. Because we have to be careful. 
when we approach God what we're asking God to speak to us about because he just might do it. And that throws us completely off track sometimes because God hearkens unto our calls, our prayers. I wonder if the Lord is saying that to Samuel as he called out to him, Samuel, can you hear me? Can you hear me? And as Robin read that particular scripture to us this morning, there were some interesting things uh, uh, about that call uh, that she spoke of, that scripture reminds us of. Now, I was looking at my Bible notes here, and six years ago, um, Major Gail Windsor spoke on this particular passage of scripture, and she noted these three things, which are significant. God always speaks first. He takes the initiative. Samuel didn't know it was God. We don't always recognize amidst the surroundings sometimes whether it is God we are actually hearing. Um, The scripture in this passage tells us that he didn't quite know God yet. And then how Samuel learned to hear uh, the voice of God or the words of God because of the help of Eli, who was training him to work within the temple. But I wonder, Samuel, Samuel, can you hear me? Hearing and responding to God's call is essential to our being fulfilled in life. Point number one, don't let circumstances silence God's call. Verses 1 to 3 speak of it. It tells us there that the word of the Lord was rare. They hadn't really recognized or listened or experienced the word of God, uh, the word of the Lord, or the voice of the Lord. God always spoke to them through, in cases, Abraham, through Moses. And in others, they didn't always recognize, the people didn't always recognize things. Which tells us that there, there weren't many visions happening at this particular time uh, during Bible times. God's revelation to a prophet was uncommon during this time, according to verse 1 of this chapter. And we may feel that we live in a world, in a society where the word of the Lord is, is rare. Man, we're seeing that more and more today. I'm not one who gets really caught up in in politics. I try to stay clear of politics and that kind of thing. But I I really got to say I'm I'm disappointed with our young prime minister because it it seems that whenever uh, these individuals get into power, they promise us all these other things up front. But when they get into power, for some reason or other, uh, they get sidetracked. And in that sidetrackedness, it's a Jerry Corey word, Um, things change. And the next thing we realize, um, someone's agenda is being pushed upon the rest of us without a voice. And and that's really troublesome. And we see it happening uh, more today, um, both in the federal and the provincial systems uh, under uh, said leaderships. And I, I think we need to be fervent in our prayers, committing. I mean, Scripture tells us that we need to pray for our leaders. And man, if there's ever a time we need to pray, it's now because it seems that the word, the voice of God is not being recognized. It's not being heard. And uh, political agendas are being forced upon what was a Christian nation. And, and so our world and our society Uh, shows us that we're we're not unlike the times that Samuel was in because he too was experiencing uh, a time when the Lord or hearing the Lord was rare. And we cannot allow the prevailing opinion or ideologies of society and culture to deafen us to God's call in our lives. It may not be in style to live sacrificially in a covenanted relationship with God. But that is what the world needs. That is why Jesus Christ came. 
answering a lifelong call to officership and service, a call to sacrifice is something that used to happen in the past. Now we've, we've heard it recognized more as a career choice than it is a calling. It's always been a calling to me. If it was a career choice, I wouldn't have chose it. <laughs> it's true. I wouldn't have. I would have gone the way I was headed until I recognized what God was saying and wanted me to do. But God is not calling today. That's what we say. That's what it appears to be. Eli's eyes, it tells us, were weakening, and he was nearly blind in verse 2. He was the leader of God's people, and his physical blindness is symbolic of his growing administrative and spiritual blindness. Eli had grown weak in his leadership, and the people of God were suffering because of it. In 2 Samuel 12, 17, and verse 22, it says this, or that's what we are reminded of. In, in this particular chapter, if we go to verses 12 to 13, it says, I'm going to carry out all my threats against Eli and his family from beginning to end, says the Lord. I have warned him time and time again that judgment is coming upon his family forever because his son's are blaspheming God and he hasn't done anything about it. He hasn't disciplined them. Sometimes people and situations can disappoint us. People will let us down. People may even hurt us or from afar off we see the other fall in their own calling. I have run across many a people in conversation as a Salvation Army officer who said they were called into ministry but didn't follow through. And you could hear the regrets within their voice as they said it. People, can you hear me, says God. Are you listening? Scripture reminds us over and, and over again, it says, he who has ears, let him hear. Can you hear me? None of these circumstances lessen or change God's call for our lives. We cannot allow circumstances to deafen us to God's voice in our own times, in our own lives. In verse 3, it says, the lamp of God had not yet gone out. It's a beautiful saying. The lamp of God had not gone out. It means there was still opportunity. There was still a chance to be heard. The reference is that the the lamp of God burned in the tabernacle. The author may be referring to a physical lamp in a particular time of day, but the symbolism cannot be missed. 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 17, it says, Then David's men declared, You are not going out to battle with us again. Why risk snuffing out the light of Israel? Why chance risking snuffing out the light of Israel? Here... We are reminded that although the word of the Lord was rare and Eli, and Eli had in many ways failed in his calling and his leadership, God still had a plan. God still had a plan and was still on the move. The lamp and light of God will never go out no matter what our circumstances are. 2 Samuel 29, 20, 22, 29 says, O Lord, you are my lamp. The Lord lights up my darkness. Elijah, in his de desperate situation in 1 Kings chapter 19, desperately s fleeing from the wrath of Jezebel, is another fine example of this truth. God always reserves for himself a remnant. Scripture always talks about the remnant, a remnant of the faithful. 
then the plan of God is not finished and God still calls. He still has a place for you as he has a place for me, a calling for you as a calling for me. Even on the days when you feel that you are all alone in this, God reminds you of his presence. Psalm 27, verse 1, the psalmist could say, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? What circumstances are you possibly allowing to silence God's call in your life today? Don't let circumstances silence God's voice, God's call. Secondly, don't let posture silence God's call. Now, this is for a lot of us. In other words, uh, young Samuel was caught napping <laughs> in bed, and uh, he could hear the voice of the Lord, but he didn't recognize the voice of the Lord, so he thought it was Eli, and so every time that he heard this voice, he quickly woke up and ran into to Eli to see what it was that Eli wanted or needed, and, uh, and, he, and we go on to that. Don't let your posture silence the call of God, verses 3 to 10. S notice where Samuel positioned himself. He spent his nights in the presence of God. F verse 3, Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. God calls his people from his holiness the power of his presence. This is Isaiah's experience. In Isaiah chapter 6, we hear the call of Isaiah. It says, Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom shall I send as a messenger to his people? Who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. We need to position ourselves in the presence and holiness of God. Verse 7 of chapter 3, Samuel says, Samuel did not yet know the Lord. So we need to take ourselves and place ourselves in the presence of where we think we will find God the most. And that's in the tabernacle. That's in this place of worship. Samuel was a child, but he ministered before the Lord. He did not yet know the Lord, but he was in the right place where the Lord could be revealed to him. And so when we don't know the Lord, we may respond to the wrong voice, right? Samuel's intention was good, and the willingness was there, but his response was misguided because he needed to know who the Lord was. Though Eli had failed in many parts of his leadership, we see here that he provides very strong advice to the young Samuel. Samuel then changes his posture before God and is able to receive the word of the Lord. Speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel's response was an indication of his willingness to be God's servant. God wants to speak to us, but we don't always hear very well. Our lives are full of noise. How can we orient our lives in such a way that we too can hear and discern the voice of God as it speaks to us? In John chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus reminds us as the good shepherd, this, my sheep listen to my voice, I know them and they follow me. And then in Hebrews 3, 7 and 15, it says, today when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled. Don't let your circumstances silence the call of God for you. Don't let your posture silence God's call for you. What do we need to do? We need to let God's call break the silence, verses 11 to 21. You see, God was about to do something big and wonderful that would make the ears, as Scripture says, would make the ears of many tingle. I can remember as a young lad growing up in Picton, 
having put my application in to become a Salvation Army officer. I can remember every day walking up to the post office on Main Street Picton, checking out the mail to see if there would be a letter of response or whatever. And finally on this one day when I went up there, I, I opened the mailbox, I saw this return address on the envelope which said College, uh, uh, William and Catherine Booth College then, College for Officer Training, and I quickly tore it open and I read the, uh, the, the letter inside and I got to the word and it said, you have been accepted. And I let this scream out of me. And everybody was looking at me. And of course, as I was walking out of the post office, in come Lieutenant Colonel Cy Fisher and he could see on my face that something had just happened. And so he stopped and asked me and he says, what Jerry, what? And I goes, I just got accepted into training college and so he quickly had a prayer with me right on the spot and then I ran all the way back down the town hill up the other hill to where I lived told my parents ran all the way back up the town hill up the other hill to where the pastors lived and uh, told them I was just so excited but when I got to training college it was a whole different experience no <laughs> <laughs> well it was <laughs> but I got through it let God's call break the silence. God was about to do something that would make the ears of people tingle. Man, my whole body was tingling at that moment. You see, God has something amazing to do for you, with you, through you, in partnership with you. Get that? In partnership with you. He's not going to force it upon you. He's not going to say, you got to do this because that's what I'm wanting you to do. He's going to do it in you, through you, with you, in partnership. Yes, God has a plan. Jeremiah reminds us of, of that. He is always moving, never static. And you are part of his plan, just like young Samuel was a part you see, Samuel wa would usher in social, political, and religious reform in the nation of Israel. He was called by God to lead the people through their greatest transition since leaving Egypt. Samuel would usher in the reign of King Saul and eventually King David himself, setting up the royal lineage of Jesus Christ. Friends, God is is calling you to something equally as significant. He says to us in Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, forget all that. I am about to do something new. Even now it has begun. Do you not see it? Are you listening? In Samuel, 1 Samuel 3, 19, it says the Lord was with Samuel as he grew up and he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. God designed each of you with a calling in mind. It might not be a calling to full-time ministry as a Salvation Army officer or a pastor, but God has designed you with a calling in mind. In Psalm 139.16, it says, You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Remarkable. God knows the intrinsic details of your life and mine. He's saying, you have a voice that must be heard for the greater good of the kingdom of God. You have a life that was designed to be lived out to the glory of God. And all Israel, it says, recognized Samuel. And in recognizing Samuel, recognized God in him. Samuel's word came to all of Israel. What 
is the platform through which God is calling you to minister for him. The Lord continued to reveal himself to Samuel through his word, according to verse 21. The text speaks to the power of God's call. At the beginning, Samuel is a young priest who does not recognize the voice of God, but, but at the end of the journey, after hearing God's call, he is a bold prophet announcing God's intentions for Eli's family. He cannot afford to have a silent life. God's call will break the silence of your life. What would your voice sound like if you allowed God's call to break the silence of your life today? And if so, what's holding you back from it? Hearing and responding to God's call is essential to fulfillment in life. We learn from Samuel's story that our circumstances don't need to silence God's call. The lamp of God has not gone out in the world or in your life. We all perhaps have circumstances that we would not wish or would rather have changed, but God's call is not restricted or confined by those things. We see, God, we see that God called Samuel by name four times. Four times. And let me tell you, it, was, it wasn't just one call that I heard. I shrugged it off for as long as I could. My calling came one night after we had transitioned from our old core on Main Street and we were meeting out of the Orange Lodge while the new, new one was being built on Elizabeth Street. And I can remember very vividly to this day, and I still get chills. The call came at reflection time to acknowledge the voice of God amongst the congregation. And I was hearing the voice of God very clearly saying, Jerry, I want to send you out. And so I was listening and I responded and I said, well, God, if you sing this chorus one more time, <laughs> and they sang the chorus one more time, and God was speaking. And it was getting mighty uncomfortable sitting there. And I said, but Lord, if they sing this one, and the ne next thing I know, they're singing that one. And I shrugged it. I ignored it. Meeting closed. I was walking out with everyone else. I got to the threshold of the outside door. And I couldn't walk any further. Literally, I could not step over the threshold. And at that moment, the corps officer, being the great man of God he was, saw it, saw the struggle, placed his hand on my shoulder, and I broke. The next thing I know, I'm back up praying at the front, kneeling before God and yielding, surrendering my life to him. It's not that way for everyone. For Samuel, it was just hearing the voice of God in the night, saying, Samuel, Samuel. And the response and question is, can you hear me? Are you listening? And Samuel says, I'm here. I am here, Lord. Our circumstances cannot silence God's call, but our posture toward God can. If we want to hear God's call, if we want to walk in fulfillment of God's plans for our lives, we need to open ourselves to the presence and moving of God's spirit in our lives. We need to be like Samuel and place ourselves before him. 1 Samuel chapter 3 reminds us that the call of God is able to wake us from our sleeping just like it woke Samuel from his early morning sleep. 
We need to be awakened to the reality of God's call in our lives and allow that call to break the silence. We are designed to do great things with God. We are to be salt and light, cities on a hill that cannot be hidden. And so we need to ask the Holy Spirit to give us generous eyes to see what the Father has planned for us, both the possibilities and the power. 2 Kings 6, 17 says, Then Elijah prayed, O Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw that the hillside around Elijah was filled with horses and chariots of fire. Matthew 6, 22, your, your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. Hebrews 1, 1 and 2 reminds us that God has spoken to us through the person of his son, Jesus Christ. The work of Jesus Christ on the cross has made it possible for us to hear but not just to hear, to respond and pray. Speak, Lord, I am listening. And we need to posture ourselves to be still so that the word of the Lord can speak to us. In patience, perhaps this morning, God is calling your name again today just as Samuel could not rest, could not sleep as the Holy Spirit was pursuing him, so perhaps this morning God will not give you rest until you step into the call he has for you. The story of Samuel is about hearing the divine call and answering, Here I am, Lord. And so he would pray simply this, Take every passion, every skill, take all my dreams and bend them to your will. My all I give, Lord, for you I'll live, Lord, come what may. All, all that I am. Can you hear him? Can you hear him? How do you respond?